and I'm host of WBGO's Saturday Afternoon Jazz. And I'm thrilled that Howard Mandel invited me to come and MC this evening. And any occasion to celebrate jazz is a beautiful thing, and the fact that we're celebrating 22 years is a huge occasion, and the fact that we are also celebrating some of the great women in jazz this year and also the international allure of this music are all occasions to come together and have a great time. So I'm thrilled to be here and I'm looking forward to a wonderful night ahead. Please put your hands together for Mr. Frank Stewart. Frank Stewart. What would jazz look like without the photographic image? So I want to give this award to Richard, he's got to go. He's got, he's a working photographer. <laughs> it's, it's an honor to receive this award. And I just want to just thank everyone for voting for me. And most of all, just thank uh, Roy Haynes for making this possible. I mean, the best the best compliment I ever got from a musician, which was from uh, uh, Reggie Workman, he said, I never saw you and I never heard you. But I'm glad you saw me now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Award is the Lona Foot Bob Parent Award for Career Excellence in Photography. I got it last year and I'm passing it on to a great photographer named Michael Jackson. This is the fourth time I've been nominated for this award and even though in Japan the number four is synonymous with death, I feel revivified by being so honored. Those of us who insist on following and supporting what we love and value in society, rather than chasing the almighty buck, tend to suffer some and are acquainted with constantly uh, being broke and or broken up with people we love. I have a photo here that was taken 14 years ago at B.B. King's by the late Jean Martin, a prior recipient of this award, who shot more than 50 covers for Jazz Times. If you're up for it a little later, I'd like to attempt to pickle you all in amber in a similar fashion. Uh, so make sure you prepare your best face and avoid the necessity of my deploying colourful language. Many thanks, great to be here, and gratitude to all those who voted me into the JJA Hall of Fame. I am genuinely thrilled to be here. Thanks so much. Tonight we salute this year's jazz heroes. Marsha K. Hawker from Portland, Oregon. Is Margaret Murphy Webb in the house? Maurice Robertson from Hartford, Connecticut. Can we have a round of applause? Hello everyone, I'm uh, Lawrence Donahue Green with the New York City Jazz Record. Um, I'm here to present the uh, original album Art Award. It's a category I suggested to Howard a few years ago and now with the resurgence in vinyl in particular, I uh, anticipate a lot more candidates, but it's um, kind of an underrated uh, aspect of the, uh, the jazz world that we're all part of. Um, so we wanted to recognize this year's winner, which is uh, from Pi Records, Simon Grindine for uh, Steve Coleman's Naval Eclipse, the Morpho Genesis album. Um, on behalf of uh, Pi Record, Julian Wang's here to accept the award. Thanks, oh, it could be very short. Uh, um, Steve Coleman is a pain in the neck when it comes to this stuff. And I'm working on the record uh, cover with him right now. These are his instructions for, how, for what he wants to see. Spontaneous dyad DNA chain, melodic structures embedded within compositions. And the three important words are embedded, sonic, and hieroglyph. And I'm supposed to make a record, label, record cover out of this. So any ideas, any help, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>
our bassist of the year. I love her thoughts on women in jazz. She has said, it's the same thing as race in jazz. If people just forget about it and listen to the music, we'd all be cool. Can I get an amen for that? Please welcome the basis of the year, Linda O. Uh, just to clarify with that quote, <laughs> uh, I mean, that was a while ago and it was, um, uh, what I meant basically was that, um, of course, you know, these discussions need to be had, but um, at the same time, uh, people would ask me, what's it like to be a woman in jazz? I'm like, well, are you asking men, what's it like to be a man in jazz, you know? <laughs> that was kind of my point, so just a clarification um, with that quote. But anyway, um, yeah, it's a huge honor to be here. Um, and, you know, with the day-to-day -day grind of being a musician, it, it is so important to have this community and it is so fantastic that we're all here and um, really engaged and we have such fantastic people within the community really keeping it alive. So yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to receive this award. Um, I was in a great company in that category with the Pua Dixon and Sarah Caswell. And thanks again. I'm just happy to be in this room right now with all this energy and all this celebration. People like the Jazz Journal Association and all those that make this possible today really help musicians to keep moving forward and to have hope and to feel like there is a reason why we're doing this. <laughs> you know, and I think that's really important. And I would just want to thank all of those that came up with this idea and they continue to work to make it happen. I'm just really thankful to be a part of that community. So thanks so much. The thing that I can say today about being in the company of so many great female artists today, and if you look at, at the expansiveness of the musical vision of the women you see here, you see that the uniqueness, the uh, depth, uh, the intellect, the, uh, the range of expressive dimension of these women artists that, that you are celebrating today I am so pleased to be in the company of. It is so diverse and so rich and beautiful, and I'm very pleased to be a part of it. Thank you very much. I really, I, w I was not ready right now. I didn't quite realize this was happening today. Um, I really love the jazz community. I really love the jazz journalists and the people that play this music and write about this music and think about this music and enjoy this music. And I think that I'm as much a fan as anything in it. And I'm really just happy to be here. And uh, it's really nice to just be invited to the party. I don't know, I love you, I really wasn't ready. So thank you and uh, thank you very much for this award. I am extremely grateful. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Uh, nice to see you all. Um, and I guess I'm the man who got an award today. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I was actually coming here feeling like I was going to get an award for my all-male band that was voted for by a bunch of men. And I was feeling guilty when I walked in the room and then saw everyone else who came before me, some of whom are dear friends of mine and co colleagues and collaborators, so I don't feel so bad. And, um, and I also encourage the JJA to include more women and more writers of color in their midst as well. And thank you once again for celebrating my work, and I'm very honored to be in this company. Uh, I'd like to thank, of course, the Jazz Journalists Association uh, for, for remembering me and including me in the list. Um, I would like to dedicate this uh, lovely award. It's gotten bigger since since the last time. <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, to uh, the memory of Mark Murphy and the memory of Joe Williams and the memory of John Hendricks. You get a box with this award. Is it what's behind door number one or? Thank you. Thank you. The box is only for people who think outside the box. 
I should mention that this JJA Musician of the Year also nabbed this year's Album of the Year for his Honey and Salt, music inspired by the poetry of Carl Sandburg. Please welcome one of the nicest guys around, drummer Matt Wilson. When I was a kid in that area, I had a buddy and uh, we saw Count Basie. We met Count Basie and Freddie Green. In one week, we went to one town and saw Clark Terry. We saw Dizzy Gillespie two days later. Three days later, we saw Oscar Pearson play solo piano at the University of Illinois. This is like a farm town of 2,000 people. But we knew about this music. One of my favorite things was to see the musicians see each other and to see how they would greet each other, ask about their families, and, and really love each other. I thought that was really great. I thought, man, it's one thing to get to play like that, but to be part of this kind of community is really something else. So one of my sayings is now, when I play one of those events, it takes an hour to play the set and two hours to say hey to everybody. <laughs> but that's what's the great part of it. And in closing, I'd like to say some words from Mr. Sandberg with all that's going on. And it's a poem of his called Choose. And it goes, the single clenched fist lifted and ready, or the open asking hand held out and waiting. Choose, for we meet by one or the other. Thank you guys so much. Love you. I'm so pleased to be here on this day of history. In the 20 years that we've been coming to these ceremonies, the JJA has never awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award in jazz journalism to a woman. That all changes today. Pat, Patricia Willard. Thank you, JJA, for this precious award. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud to, to receive it and to be the first woman to receive it. Uh, <laughs> started writing about jazz, uh, there were precious few. I, I was one of the first, I think. Um, and now there's, there's a, quite a few good writers, and I'm proud to be among them. And thank you. This award is so important, I've got a few words so I kind of prepared. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Tom Hanks could not be with us tonight uh, <laughs> to make his presentation to the only major jazz musician whose music and autograph has inspired an entire Steven Spielberg feature film, 2004's The Terminal. You all remember that? <laughs> Our award recipient appeared in, performed his original music in, and spoke a few lines in that movie. Today, he reinforces his position at the pinnacle he significantly occupies in the famed 1958 Art Kane photo, known as A Great Day in Harlem, with his election by our astute members for the Jazz Journalist Association's Lifetime Achievement Award, Mr. Benny Golson. This is fantastic. It's great to be told how great you are, but whenever I go home, my wife tells me to put the trash out. <laughs> you know, I started out as a piano student, yeah, at nine years old. And then at 14, like Patricia said, I heard that darn saxophone. And it was a summertime. And I started to play <coughs> on the front room with the windows open and all the neighbors wanted to kill me. <laughs> I never foresaw anything like this. But the time changes everything. And here I am today. And you know, today I sat there and so many women came up here to be honored. You know, there was a time when I was growing up, females only played the flute, the cello, the violin, the piano. And we used to say, ah, she plays good for a woman. But sometimes they play better than us guys. 
And it really just proves that the women have finally come out of the kitchen. Yes. Time changes everything, and here I am. And what is our nexus? Our nexus that connects us is the jazz that we play and that you listen to. And uh, I hope I have a few more years that I can keep peering behind that symbolic door and find out what's behind there. Thank you so much. You know, as somebody who's spent uh, his whole career on the business side of the music community, I've got to tell you it's an incredible honor to be here in your midst with the unbelievable talent on the creative side of the industry. I'm, I'm truly honored just to be here with you. Not surprisingly, the women and men we celebrate today constitute the most inclusive and diverse musical community on the planet. Yeah. yeah. Many believe, as do I, that that diversity was not only the seed that gave birth to the music, but the key to its longevity and its continuing worldwide appeal. Indeed, if anything, jazz is more inclusive and diverse today than it has ever been. And it bestows on it a character that will continue to nurture the future of this incredible art form. So, Please join me as we raise a glass, hope some of you at least have gotten a chance to get some of that Prosecco, to our Lifetime Achievement Awards winners, Benny and Patricia, all the journalists and artists we honor today, all the jazz heroes nationwide, and all the 2018 JJA Award winners Here's to you. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask everyone, it's time for this year's group photo. So we would like to direct people to go in front of these two pillars in the front. We want to make sure Howard and Mr. Golson are in the center. And any winners this year also, we're all winners. Mr. George Clavin. It's 
really a pleasure to be among people who understand what we're trying to do here, which is to keep this wonderful music and art form alive and available to people, and especially people, <coughs> younger people, who don't know what jazz is, and you guys too. And so I thank you so much for awarding us, for voting for us for this very prestigious honor, especially considering the labels that we were up against, these uh, giant labels, and we were just as little guys on the block trying to do something good, and we're doing it, and thank you so much. Bravo. I'm Zeb, I'm really co-president of Resonance Records, and I just really wanted to take a moment just to express my appreciation to this gentleman to my left, George Clavin, who has done so much for the music. He has given me life, but on behalf of all the families, of the artists on our labels, those past and present, uh, we feel there's really a mission with the great work that we're doing, and I want to thank everyone from the Jazz Journalists Association who lends your support to our projects. There's so much great music that comes out, and it really means a lot to me and to George, and I just wanted to say with this whole room how much I love you, man. You give me life. Oh. I could not have done it without this gentleman. He has done so much. Well, I want to say that I'm just one out of, on a team that brought this project possible. And it was an international effort. And again, I want to thank all the members of the Jazz Journalists Association for all of your support in making this happen. And, um, I, you know, it's really inspiring decades and decades later that recordings, even a studio recording, can come to life. But first of all, I want to thank Thelonious Monk for continuing to inspire all of us with his music. Anyways, thank you very much, and uh, thanks again. This is a note from our publisher, Mr. Frank Alkire. On behalf of everyone at Downbeat Magazine, we'd like to thank the Jazz Journalists Association for this tremendous award. Jazz journalism is our craft. The writers, the photographers, editors, and administrators of Downbeat put tremendous care, sweat, and creativity into this work. It's what we love to do. Never forget, jazz journalism is a profession. It matters, and it's not easy. Thank you to the JJA for shining a light on the great artists who make this music and the professionals work so hard to cover this amazing scene. So thank you to all of you that have graced our covers, our features, our master classes, our reviews, and <laughs> all the rest. Keep doing it. Thank you. Thanks to Howard for his tireless efforts in making sure this organization stays in business and uh, prospers. So thank you, Howard. Uh, writers, we explain this music, we love this music, we put it in context, and we live and breathe it. There's a great symbiosis between the writer and the jazz musician. Both need each other. Both have the joy and both have the passion. Um, it's absolutely a joy to write Jazz Wax each day. It's coming up on 11 years. Uh, history is important. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Over the last year, I've been writing my ass off. Um, <laughs> And that doesn't even count the work that I put into my book, which is not available at the bar. Um, but if you read my work over the past year, you had to find it somehow. And this is a position that most of us who are writers and, and journalists, members of the JJA, most of us are in this position. And that's become more the case and more the case. And you know, musicians know what I'm talking about because the struggle to get your stuff out and noticed, you know. Um, so my, I, I want to leave you all with a kind of um, exhortation um, on behalf of all of my colleagues. You need to find this work, and when you find it, and if it speaks to you, you need to share it. You need to tell people about it. You need to help us get the word out, because you're not only helping the musician, you're also helping the state of jazz journalism, and ultimately the, the condition of this music. Um, 
this is all incredibly interconnected. You know, and if, if, if you don't have a Twitter account, if you don't have a Facebook account, fine. Take your copy of Downbeat or Jazz Times or whatever it is, um, share it with somebody and say, hey, check out this review or check out this feature. I thought this was really cool. Did you see what uh, this person wrote about this album? Um, if you see a post that Mark does on Jazz Wax, share that shit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really, really important because uh, the, the engine of spreading the word about this music is in this room and it's, and it's the people that you know. When I was a young man, growing up in the west suburbs of Chicago, I first heard a show called Straight No Chaser on WNIB. You guys know Chuck Mitchell used to be yeah. the rec It was Chuck Mitchell and Neil Tessa. And then I found out this guy was a writer and I became a huge fan. And then I got into the radio business. Uh, I was a volunteer first at WDCB in Chicago. I helped build that place. And then I got on as an operations engineer at WBEZ, and the only person I wanted to meet was Neil Tessa. Couldn't wait to meet him. Everybody would say, why? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is the winner of the Willis Conover, Mary McPartman, Career Excellence in Broadcasting. My buddy, your buddy, too, sir. That was, that was very sweet, Mark. Um, when you say you hate to admit that you were listening to me as a teenager, I hate to hear that. That's, that's just disturbing. Um, I really appreciate this. This is, this is quite lovely for a number of reasons. Uh, I've always considered myself uh, uh, happiest when I'm writing and doing radio, balancing the two out. A number of people have said things that expressed as well as I could hope to, uh, really important uh, truths about what we're doing here. Comments like that are a great reminder of why it's worth having this organization, why it's worth having this award ceremony every year, why it's worth trying to maintain the uh, standards and validity of jazz radio, which is constantly dissipating around the country. Uh, people can hear it now on internet stations, of course. They can hear it on Spotify, but it's not the same as handcrafted radio. It's not the same as somebody saying, you know, this reminds me of this, and here's why, and here's the thing to put in the middle that bridges those and let people figure it out for themselves. You know, show, don't tell. So uh, I really am quite honored to be in the company of those who have won. Congratulate all the other winners. Thank you for sticking around this long. Once again, for Howard Mandel, thank you. We like to acknowledge people that um, some of you may know, many of you may not know, but should know. Um, the Jazz Hero Award for New York City this year is a gentleman by the name of Bruce Lee Galanter, who is, uh, yeah. plays a very significant role in New York City. I just want to introduce you to him if you're not aware of him. He runs something that we uh, once all knew called the Record Store. And um, it's still a very vital uh, community place for everyone to gather. Bruce provides um, something that is so significant that you cannot get on Spotify and all these other things. He, you can go into his store, tell him what you like, and in the old tradition of the record stores, he can lead you to something else that you would not have known about. Um, and he started out with a monthly newsletter that suddenly became a bi-monthly and then a weekly newsletter. Uh, all you gotta do is sign up to his newsletter and find dozens upon dozens of reviews of all the new CDs, as well as uh, vinyl records that he uh, reviews that you can discover for yourself. He has now an international reputation. People make uh, trips to New York and walk out with hundreds of dollars worth of uh, vinyl records, bags full of them. His uh, lease is up in October of this year, so I heard, so I hope that he continues the tradition. Um, but without further ado, I, I really would like to, um, all of us to give a standing ovation to uh, my jazz hero and hopefully yours, Bruce Lee Galanter of the Downtown Music Gallery.
Wow, that's beautiful. Downtown Music Gallery is about providing a home for creative music, um, progressive music, avant-garde music, jazz music, rock music, rock world music, all kinds of stuff like that. And I have a, a dream job, because I go there every day, uh, I organize stuff, I talk to people, musicians come in, sell me their stuff. Um, serious listeners come in and talk to me. And all over the world, people keep telling me that whatever record store they used to go to for many years, those record stores are all closing. Because um, people listen to music on their phones, uh, they go to Spotify and YouTube and places like that where musicians don't get paid, uh, which is sad. But the thing is, when you go to a record store, you actually talk to a human being, you listen to music, and it's a very personal and a good experience. Um, and, and a lot of my favorite things that ever happen are in a record store. Uh, so I feel at home being there, and I look forward every day to doing that and to having musicians come in and talk. I just spoke with uh, the, uh, the landlord recently who speaks only Chinese. So it's not easy to communicate with him. But he's going to give me an extension on our lease for three more years. So, uh, I'm happy about that. Um, we're, we're on uh, Monroe Street uh, in Chinatown, which is close. It's called Two Bridges, that area. Uh, I feel honored to be in a, in a room with journalists who I love and musicians who I love. This is a beautiful thing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Wow.